Good morning, and thank you for being here at the La Via Youth Center for the press release of the opening of the Disaster Recovery Center here in La Via, Texas. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all here, and I'd like to let uh, County Judge Richard Cortez make the opening ceremonies. Thank you, Chairman. Good morning, everyone. First of all, thank you for joining us for the site tour and the news conference. We're a very much welcome and needed FEMA Disaster Recovery Center. This center and the FEMA teams who are canvassing the most impacted neighborhoods are a direct result of the federal emergency declaration that Hidalgo, Cameron, Willisie counties received on July the 17th. Residents whether they are homeowners or renters, and businesses who were impacted by the June 2019 floods are eligible to receive assistance from FEMA, the Small Business Administration, and other organizations. We all want to thank the governor of Texas, Governor Abbott, and our president of the United States, President Trump, for supporting our disaster declaration and providing these very much needed funds to our residents. This is the second year in a row that some of our communities have been impacted by flooding during what's supposed to be a 500 year event. We've had two in, in a very short time. While Hidalgo County is currently working on qualifying for federal declaration for public assistance, our first concern as always is for our residents and their safety they are top of our priority. So I encourage all the affected Idaho County residents to register for assistance, either online with the disaster recovery teams or better yet, by coming here on their own convenience to this one-stop disaster discovery center in La Villa. And we want to thank the community of La Villa for this wonderful facility and for the use of this facility. Thank you. Thank you, Judge Cortez. Now I'd like to present to you uh, Hidalgo County Precinct Commissioner David Fuentes, which his area has been the one that has been most impacted in the last two years. Commissioner Fuentes. Thank you, Chief, and thank you to everybody being here, our media partners, uh, FEMA, and uh, of course, all of the Hidalgo County and local uh, elected officials and representatives of the communities that are the most affected uh, in this past June event. Obviously, the county has been uh, working with our emergency management team locally and also with the state. Uh, we'd like to thank um, John Ovalle and all the people from the, from the State Department of Emergency Management for their assistance during this rain event. Unfortunately, in 300, less than 370 days, we go through two 500-year storm events. This time, it affected the, north, uh, the Delta area, the northern part of Precinct 1. Our staff uh, responded very quickly on, on the day of the event, uh, but we have to work with the resources that we have. So far, we have collected almost 600 tons of debris. We encourage our residents to continue to call our office to put the, the debris that's been affected by the rain event, the storm event, anything that has been touched by these storm waters, to put that out in the right of way. Make sure that you call our office so that we can assist with getting that kind of debris out of your homes. We also have our local uh, sanitation sites that are also accepting debris if you feel like you can do this yourself. We encourage people to take advantage over the next 30 days because we don't know when this disaster uh, is going to be declared over and we, you will have to start paying for that out of pocket. So take advantage of this opportunity to get that damaged uh, home, household structures, uh, your mucking and gutting, your appliances, anything that was affected by the water. Continue to call our office and report any uh, infrastructure needs that you may have. We have already done our post-storm assessment. We have already responded to the public assistance side and will continue to move forward in representing our area uh, th in the best way possible. We'd like to thank our FEMA partners, our state partners. We'd like to thank the, the city of La Villa for opening up the Youth Facility Center uh, on behalf of all of the area that was most affected. As you can see, when you walk out this building, you see parks, you see swimming pools, you see quality of life issues, you see quality of life places. It's, it's no wonder that FEMA decided to open a place here because this, we're talking about a quality of life. We're talking about getting people back on their feet and getting back to normal. 
That's what this represents. Please take advantage of this opportunity to come visit with them. Let them know, bring your receipts, bring your pictures, bring, your, bring all the information you possibly can to help them help you. And we will continue to do the same. We thank uh, the cities of Monte Alto, Ed Couch, Elsa, La Villa, and Hargill uh, for being patient with the process. Understand that we are working as diligently as we can with all of our state and federal officials to make sure that we get you the representation and assistance that you so desperately need. We'll continue to work uh, with our resources uh, that we have available to us and we'll continue to ask for assistance from the state and federal government to for the much needed infrastructure that we need in our area. Again, thank you to the Department of Emerg Emergency Management, to Chief Saldana and all of his staff for their assistance during this rain event and we'll continue to represent you. Please let us know how, how we can continue to be of assistance to you. Thank you. Commissioner, thank you very much for those great comments. I'd like to introduce the Mayor La Via Alma Moron who has graciously allowed this facility and her community to serve us. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, a warm welcome is extended to all of you on behalf of the city of La Villa, the elected officials, and all of our city employees and our residents. Uh, we'd like to let you all know that we are here to assist all the agencies that are here today, uh, working with our neighboring cities, uh, our county elected officials, and FEMA. We, are, we stand ready to support all the efforts that are out here to help the residents bring their lives back to normal. Uh, again, if there's anything that we can do uh, to assist you, please do not hesitate to call the city of La Villa, and we're gonna be working hand in hand with the FEMA officials here uh, in the youth center. Thank you very much. Mayor, thank you very much. Now I'd like to bring La Tanga Hope with FEMA PIO. Good morning, everyone. As a representative of FEMA, I'd like to tell you that we're happy to be here in support of this effort and working with the state and local government. Um, I'd like to give you a couple of pieces of information about what our mission is. We will be providing individual, household, as well as um, home repairs, and those will be the assistance sorts that will be available. I'd like to give you some guidelines about um, ways to get a hold of us. The first one is with the phone number, 1-800-621-3362. If you have any questions or concerns, that would be your first resource. Disasterassistance.gov. That would be the website that you can go to in order to get questions and concerns answered or to find out about the direction and the recovery efforts. Besides that, I'd like to also encourage um, the survivors that when you come in, there's a couple pieces of information that would be useful in the process of getting your case expedited. Um, the first would, of course, be your driver license. Um, we'd like to know about the extent of the damage. We, you don't have to be an expert on this. The cliche or the term that I've used here recently is that a picture is worth a thousand words. So in order to support what you would like to convey, in take pictures. I'll just make it very simple. If you can get some pictures about the damage and the extent, get those pictures in and bring them with you come when you come in. Besides that, if you can give us the address. Some people are displaced. They have different addresses please make sure you have that information available to you as well. We'd like to know if you have insurance, bring that information. And then there's other pieces of information that if you were going to go in in order to validate information, you can find that on the website as well. I wanted to speak really quickly about the services that are gonna be offered on the humanitarian effort. I understand that the Texas um, Department of Insurance is here, and I understand that we're also providing legal assistance. So there are other human agencies that are also here. Um, I think that we're going to have this information made available in Spanish by my colleague and she'll give you more details. When you go to the website, if you do not speak Spanish and you do not speak English, there are other alternatives. If you are deaf and unable to get the information, there will be subsequent equipment and also resources made available for you. We are here to make sure that this effort goes well and I'm gonna wrap this up so that Maria can provide you with some information in Spanish and again, we hope for a speedy recovery. Maria Padon, she's also the PIO. Good morning all, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, I would like to add a few more things to you. Uh, we also have disaster survivors assistance teams going door to door in different neighborhoods. And also, uh, you can come to the center 
you can always give a call to the emergency manager and let them know that you are unable to make it here. So they can uh, give us your address and let them know where you are so we can send those teams to your house. Also, don't disqualify yourself. Um, and I would like to remind you that you have 60 days from the time of the declaration, which was on July 17th, and the deadline will be September 16th to apply for assistance. Also, um, we are a disaster recovery agency. We are not immigration. Don't be afraid to come to us or to apply. Don't disqualify yourself. Uh, so far, we have completed more than two uh, 2,287 home inspections in the three counties. Uh, more than 46% of the inspections requested. It, we have on the, on the ground 33 inspectors deployed to the Texas disaster hit counties. And so far, we have more than 7.5 million in disaster grants have been approved for Texas homeowners and renters who sustain uninsured and underinsured losses from these storms. And a total of uh, more than 3.6 million in housing grants for people to assist in rebuilding and repairing their homes. Um, eh, una cosa bien importante eh, es que eh, tenemos equipos del, de FEMA que se llama uh, Disaster Survivors Assistant Team, que van a los diferentes barrios. Eh, si usted no puede venir aquí al centro, eh, déjele saber a su um, manejador del condado de emergencias que usted necesita uh, ayuda para que eh, nuestro, nuestros equipos vayan a su casa a tomarle la solicitud y no se descalifiquen. Estamos aquí para ayudarle. Eh, nuestra agencia es una agencia de recuperación por desastre. Nosotros no somos inmigración. Y eh, también queremos dejarles saber que ya se han dado 7 uh, millones de dólares en ayuda. Y eh, tenemos a los inspectores en los tres condados que han sido declarados. Y también eh, ya se han dado 3.6 millones en subvenciones de vivienda para ayudar a la reconstrucción y a la reparación de las casas y de esa manera proveer un lugar seguro donde las personas puedan vivir. También eh, los inspectores de FEMA ya han visitado 2.287 casas en los tres condados y más del 46% de las inspecciones pedidas han sido realizadas. Eh, 33 inspectores están en todo el estado de Texas. Y eh, déjenos saber si tienen alguna pregunta, siempre nos pueden llamar al 1-800-621-FEMA o 1-800-621-3362. Nuestras líneas están abiertas de 7 de la mañana a 10 de la noche. Eh, y ahora pues me da mucho gusto. And now I would like to introduce one of our team members. Her name is Debbie Ducommon, who this is not her first rodeo in the area. This is her second one. And she is with the voluntary agency Liaison. Welcome, Debbie. Thank you, Maria. Thank you and, and good morning. I'm, I'm sorry to have to be here again, but we're just pleased to, to have a small part in your recovery. So as a voluntary agency liaison, we have a variety of areas where we're able to offer assistance, support, and guidance. But within the FEMA programs, we're actually at the very end of the program. So when survivors have gone through the FEMA process, they've received the assistance that they qualify for. As we know, many of them still have unmet needs. A lot of them have special needs. And in the emergency response phase, they'll be referred to us, we're called the Val Shop. You also have a state Val that we coordinate with, just a, a FYI, but they're referred to us, and in that, in that phase right now, we'll go ahead and we'll reach out into the communities, and we'll, we'll look for organizations and agencies where they can connect and get their needs met right now. But then, 
We also work with long-term recovery. We help to develop long-term recovery groups, and we also help them to form their case management programs. So, uh, you know, once we go ahead and, and get them in our system, and we know about them, then we can refer them on to long-term recovery. We offer guidance and support and training to long-term recovery groups. Uh, it, every community is different, and so it looks different everywhere. We, we try to come in and work with you as you need. And the basic goal is that when we leave, these survivors are on the way through case management, and hopefully they're going to reach that new normal with their needs met. Uh, in addition to long-term recovery, though, as I said, we offer support in a number of other areas, such as emergency housing needs in this phase, uh, volunteer and donations management, we offer support, and also to form a VOAD or COAD, and VOAD is a Voluntary Organizations Active in Disaster. There's a national VOAD, and it's good for every community be, to be tapped into that after the disaster to continue to, excuse me, to continue to work on mitigation and preparation for the next. Uh, we work with all the faith-based, the nonprofits, the community organizations, the human health services, um, and we work with state and federal partners. And that's how we, we collaborate with them to bring in resources. So I know you're stretched thin, but we have state and federal partners that still have pockets and have monies. And so that's what we'll be looking for for these communities, to reach out to them and bring them in. They'll be connected to the long-term recovery to provide resources for case management. So we're hoping and expecting a, really a successful recovery for you. Thank you for allowing us to be here. And if you have any questions for our area, my coworker, Liana Aguilar, and myself will be here afterwards. Thank you so much and best wishes. Thank you. Now I'd like to call up Luis Santos with SBA. Thank you. Morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Luis Santos, uh, Public Information Officer for the U.S. Small Business Administration, the Office of the Disaster Assistance. Small Business Administration is offering federal low interest disaster loans to businesses of all sizes, most private nonprofit organizations, homeowners, and renters. Businesses may borrow up to $2 million uh, for disaster uh, property damage to repair or replace it. Uh, as well, if your business needed to close because of the severe storms that occur during June 24th and 25th in the Hidalgo County, as well, you can apply for an economic injury disaster loan. Homeowners, if you suffer any property damage, you may borrow up to $200,000, and if you lost any personal property, like vehicles, TV, you, can, you may borrow up to $40,000. We encourage everyone to visit the disaster recovery centers located in Hidalgo County. As well, you can contact us for more information at 1-800-659-2955. You can log in to our website, disasterlawn.sba.gov slash ELA. And like I say, again, encourage everyone. We got on to September 16th. That's our deadline day. So come into the Disaster Recovery Center, register with FEMA, and apply with SBA. Both services, we encourage everyone to register before the deadline day. Mi nombre es Luis Santos, oficial de información pública para la administración de pequeños negocios de los Estados Unidos de Norteamérica. Y la administración de pequeños negocios está ofreciendo préstamos federales a bajos intereses para dueños de hogar, organizaciones privadas sin fines de lucro, inquilinos y negocios. Los negocios pueden solicitar un préstamo de hasta 2 millones de dólares para reparar o reemplazar propiedad dañada por los eventos que ocurrieron en junio 24 y 25 de las tormentas severas e inundaciones en el condado de Hidalgo, también Cameron y Woodesey. Los también te, pueden, si necesitan un poco de información o necesitan más información, pueden acceder eh, a nuestra página web disasterloan.sba.gov diagonal 
ELA, llámenos al 1-800-659-2955. Y recomendamos a todos, tenemos un centro ubicado en cada condado. Venga al centro, regístrese con FEMA y aplique para un préstamo federal de bajos intereses con SBA. Tiene hasta septiembre 16 para registrarse y aplicar. Agradecemos a todos por su, su asistencia aquí y muchas gracias por la oportunidad. Thank you, Mr. Santos. I'd like to recognize several people from our community that are here representing various agencies. Uh, Pete De La Cruz, Emergency Management Coordinator for the City of Ed Couch. Oscar Garza, Emergency Management Coordinator for the City of Elsa. David Alaniz, Operations Manager, City of La Villa. Ana Garcia, representing uh, Senator Cornyn's office. And our Constable Precinct 5, Danny, I'm sorry, Danny, if I chop it up, uh, Mari, Mar Marichilada. <laughs> <laughs> Got it close. <laughs> Got it close, but I'm sorry, Constable. And then Connie Villanueva, representing the community of Monte Alto. In conclusion, we would like to thank our press partners for being here and the community for being here for this event and the opening of this Disaster Recovery Center. It will open up at 1 p.m. this afternoon, but if residents are here now, the center will take those individuals as an intake and begin the process. Again, thank you all very much for being here today and have a great day.